Super Mario RPG Switch. I love you so much. And given how this has been success, it's time to take a brief if step away from that and now talk about another bit of pop culture reimagining and of a story I love to no end and which definitely not only respects the legacy of its previous works but also I managed to play to understand that. Here are my first viewing thoughts on Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. I know this is going to be my first impressions video but I would end up enjoying it so much I just end up binging the whole thing and and now it's my first, first viewing thoughts so let's get started. Based on the graphic novels by Brian Lee O'Malley as well as containing elements from um, the highly acclaimed video game aim, and also the a cult favorite motion picture here by Edgar Wright and Michael Bacall sees he Scott Pilgrim's push to life in the far off land Toronto, Canada in the late 2000s and or perhaps just the 2000s as a whole given how it's still it then to turn like the unintentional period piece sorcery hero became into a little bit one that space I mean as he starts dating a young one named Ramona Flowers he ends up coming in into blows with her seven evil exes where the story goes however her is gonna be a bit different for even if you're a long time fan like I am um so yeah. This anime is done by Science Saru, a studio I've been only fairly recently exposed to through their other works. But they've done a great job capturing like the energy of the source material and its previous adaptations, and which almost seemed like it was destined for this kind of kind of work given how anime and manga uh, definitely contributes a lot to the source's DNA. Hey, and definitely not just in the face, but also the character dynamics and the voice cast actually applies to the role for the movie, and which is actually kind of refreshing. And I'll carry some other adaptations that I might consider looking at, might not. Uh, but I'm actually surprised how many people they got back, not just the big names, but also had unique voices of their own added to this Ben Wolfhard, Will Forte, a, even Edgar Wright as well as Hiracular's son Peggy Nick Frost have cameos in there. I'm not gonna say how, but let's just say a it's highly amusing and likewise. I'm gonna try I, I not to do too many spoilers. I mean there are certain canon events that are kept intact, especially in regards to Ramona's exes, but they do a lot of interesting things with the story and visuals that I think you're really going to enjoy. I mean, that's kind of what, the whole thing about an adaptation. You can't always get the letter of the material, but if you get the spirit, you basically got it down. Um, that's why I sometimes I like, use like a Batman analogy as I, I sometimes tend to do when talking about adaptations where that's why there's so many different versions where sometimes just sometimes you're having something have a leading really hard detective aspect of the character, even more than superhero ones. Other times you end up basically doing something like say you're basically making Home Alone in the DC universe. Yes, I'm looking forward to maybe a little Batman finally coming out. Yeah, I don't mind some of the Easter eggs. I would argue that it's not that the references are there, but how you use them. Like, I mean, like subtle ones towards like things like Pokemon, on Sonic or X Men, and um, but also other ones that throw me for a loop. I'm not again. I'm not going to spoil them, which you give an idea of how much they have surprised me. Hey. But I especially liked the whole little change I made, like, whereas as in the comic and the movie, when most delivering for Amazon.ca, in this anime, she's delivering DVDs for Netflix, which is kind of interesting because now Amazon technically competed them via Prime, and also they finally they stopped DVD.com earlier this year, with the last ones going out as well. 
was kind of wistful, I mean, which in a way is kind of, kind of also indicative of how streaming video for a great many people supplanted having in their stuff IRL. Oh, so there's that. And let's just say, hey, hey, another reason I'm not getting into too much detail is that they drop a very heavy hint of about a potential second season. I hope they get it. Because I'd say that they really get together, together and it's more like what's like the comic and the movie and the game I can see myself experiencing again and again and again. The TVMA kind of surprised me given how how the language isn't not isn't as rough as it is some of the other one they have have on their service. In fact, they even keep keep the they one gag I will point out they keep like the whole covering the mouth with black bar they did in the movie movie when they do a rougher one, and there is some blood in some of the fights, but. It's not nearly like in Devilman Crybaby where there there's like the whole fountain of it when at during like the first episode alone. Oh, and it's I would basically I would give him like a T14 or at least a hard TVPG. So in the ballpark of other dot animations and and like kind of like. The Simpsons or Simpsons or earlier Season of Family Guy or earlier Adult Swim series, like kind of like that. I mean, at the same time, I totally get why they went that angle because there's all the concepts. Again, if you watch the an anime, you know what I'm talking about. How that younger audience would not like, likely not find fun, or at least kind of hard to follow. Oh, like the whole existentialism over something as simple as like, like dating. And a new woman, and but even like the whole changing the, her hair color every day and a half, half much like it was like it's definitely in such a way where the little quirks in quirks in the, the story don't actually feel like that way. They're actually intrinsic to the plot, believe it or not. Uh, it's, and yes, I did find highly amusing that at some of the other. Her dates were in a, in this world were essentially a and other life Superman, Captain Marvel, oh, and Katara name a few. Yeah. Hey, tomorrow I will be talking about a a comic book adaptation that's not quite as good as this one, but still should be an interesting top topic. I mean. I mean, a, a few hints I'll give you are pretty obvious about that one. It came out earlier this year, and despite the fact that it's one of the lowest gross scene, if not the lowest gross installed in my entire franchise, it's the character and lead actor that remain in there uh, will be still be a part of the franchise after the reboot in the near future. So that'll be all for now. I'll see you all again soon. So take care, everyone. Mm-hmm.